Hi guys, what I'm going to do here at the moment, we're going to do a small cutaway of a motor. Um, I found this little motor was going to be thrown out, so I thought I might just show you how you go away, um, how we go about cutting back a small motor. So what I've done already is I've already taken off the fan cover. So the fan cover is the thing I removed first. Then I took out the bolts which hold on the end plate. Slightly put a couple of screwdrivers in behind the fan. We took the plastic fan off. Um, one thing you notice about a fan when you take the fan cover off, they're not blow, they're not angled like you see on a normal um, fan in a house. Well, like a boat propeller, if you look at a boat propeller, it can only go one way and it creates thrust. The reason these blades are flat like this, because with three, a three-phase motor, it can go back and forth either uh, anti-clockwise or clockwise, and it still needs to cool the motor. And the idea is where the motor sits on top here with the fan blade and the cowling, it actually blows air over, the ca over these fins. The fins are actually designed to cool the motor like a heat sink. Because all your heat, if you look inside here where we've just got the windings just in here, this is where most of the primary, so the primary base, this is like a primary of a transformer, the secondary is the rotor inside. So what I'm going to do, we're going to pull this apart a little bit, just have a look for a second, I'll explain. So we've got the fan, like I said yeah, that can go either way, all right, it's only made of plastic so it keeps very lightweight, you can get them out of aluminium and all that. Um, it doesn't have a keyway on it, so we now take off. This also had a bearing backing plate behind it too to help hold it, hold it on. So the bearing sits in here, you get a very dry grease. We don't get oil like you do like in a car or anything. The grease is made to hold on. There's a backing plate that holds on here. You'll notice there's a plastic seal in here too, so it sits around the shaft. Okay, all right, So because in case the shaft's moving a little bit, it's not rubbing against steel, it's actually rubbing against a rubber seal. So that's actually a rubber seal there. All right, then we have the shaft. So I'm gonna pull the shaft out, all right. So all I've got to do is undo these ends, so I'll undo these three bolts now. Alright, undo these. Alright, there's three retaining bolts. The funny thing about this actually is this body's aluminium uh, and these are like a cast iron on the end here. So, and the cast iron's made because it doesn't twist as much. Aluminium's good and very light, but when you sometimes get a little bit of movement with a heavy load, uh, aluminium will tend to um, start twisting. So inside the bearing casing here, you'll start to get slop and all that. And with cast iron, when you machine it, it stays solid and all that stuff and holds its shape. So um, aluminium's good. Why? Because it gets rid of heat, it's light, and that's what your fins are. So this is actually like a big heat sink on the end here. So we're just getting the end cover off now. You'll notice the pulley on here. This is made for a rubber pulley, so you actually slide a rubber coupling in there. And as it turns around, it runs with the rubber and all that. So it takes the vibration out back to the motor. So when you get vibration down a shaft, it doesn't come all the way through to the pulley. And the rubber coupling acts like a, um, a buffer to keep the vibration out, all right? So we've taken our three bolts out. The covers are also made to fit either end. So if you need to turn the shaft around, you can turn it around that end. The whole body and everything's the same. The only thing you're gonna find is where the motor cover is on the top here, that uh, you can't uh, interchange that around, but the shaft, for uh, end to end you can change, they're all the same, the bolts, so we need to just get the cover off, so uh, get a screwdriver, we'll take the end cover off, there we go, and the reason that's not coming out, because I need to hold that into, into the circuit, and guess what, I need to pull my bearing plate off, so anyway you can see in there, I need to pull a cover off on the end of the other side, but can you see those little dimples in here as well? They're used to help hold the weight. See the washer on here? That washes to help balance the shaft. So when they cast these, we have the rotor bars which sit up in here. So you can see the little rotor bars sitting up in here. These are to actually help weight it. You can see the divot taken off. We have the bearing backing plate. There's a spring washer in here as well. See this wave washer? That wave washer there is to help push the, the um, uh, plate back so the shaft's always got no and otherwise it's got no end movement in it all right so with this i can't quite get it out i'll need to get the bearing off which is a bit of a pain in the ass and if i take this cover off here we should be able to pull it out but i'll get that off so what i'll do i'll come back to you in a minute and we'll have a little bit more look okay so we're back again now i've got the um shaft out now so things i was talking about before how the motor consists of so in a three-phase motor, we have the end plate, we have a fan cover, so 
basically we have the end plate fan and cover go on that creates cooling over the outside shaft right these fins also act as a uh, as a weight to say stop it flexing back this way because when you've got a, a um, surface area across straight it makes it so it doesn't bend all right so i've got rid of all those we've got the fan we understand why the fan blades are straight so we can go back and forth anyway so we can turn on anyway and create heat we have a look at this the shaft you'll notice that these lines are going on a 45 all right these are what we call our rotor bars right this is a solid ring around here all right which goes all the way around there's two rings that sit at either end here and here the bar which goes inside these now these are laminated plates it looks like one big chunk of steel but they're actually little laminated plates and the idea of the laminated plates is so that you stop the hysteresis in other words we don't want this to heat up as one block of steel these are all little plates stacked together and they put them on a slight angle so as it cuts through these rotor bars so as you can see inside here all these slots this creates a magnetic field so we have one winding here see here we have one here right we have three of these windings going around and one comes off each phase and what happens is they're called like ghost magnets which means is if these two power up at one stage the shaft will move these next two turn up the shaft will move and the next two and they're doing that three times or 50 times a second on each phase so what happens is these two will magnetize up the shaft will move around a bit more the next two and they keep doing it and it's called a rotating magnetic field so this rotating magnetic field we get on the stator is like the primary on a transformer once we charge it up this becomes polarized these little bars they get a magnetic field around them all right and the magnetic field cutting between these two magnetic fields so there's magnetic field coming around that bar and this bar they become charged and what happens is it gets a push and pull effect so it actually becomes rotating but there's no without actually touching each other there's a one mil air gap between here so when this slides in here there's a one mil air gap so that means it's got to cross that air gap to get into these bars so it's like a transformer this is the secondary this is the primary but instead of actually getting a voltage and a current output we actually get torque or momentum all right so we're converting this power which is electrons in a winding we actually convert into mechanical energy so this that's the definition of power you can either convert it to heat light or you might convert it to mechanical power so turning this around and making a turn we get this shaft so this is where we call the rotor bars and we call this a squirrel cage motor three phase because we don't have to have a starting switch we don't have to create a phase difference like in a single phase motor you have the one phase and it's not rotating so we create a phase difference in a single phase motor that's where we have two different size windings now see all the winding wire on these there's three windings in here right and they all consist of um, all equal values so you, red white blue you have three phases and what happens is you have six windings so what happens is this is actually wired in star so you can actually see the bars coming across so one winding will come in all right go down to here the next one will come across here so anytime you come into the winding in the star point you actually have two in series all right so this is star if we were going to do it in a delta configuration we would have three bars facing across this way all right and that means we would only have one winding between two phases here we have two windings so the winding comes down goes through here goes through to the next one comes back out and comes the other one so it doesn't matter these are my, this is where i'd put my primary red white blue this is my star point we don't need a neutral because all the three windings are equal say three ohms each the current basically cancels itself out because it's kind of like saying i've got two two negative fives and a plus ten would cancel himself out become zero that's kind of like how they rotate around the three phases so we ended up getting this north south north south traveling around the rotor and what it does it creates a rotating magnetic field so the heat that we get generated is actually inside here because as we put more torque on the shaft more current gets into these windings it's got to overcome the uh, torque or the breakdown of the shaft the only time it'll break down and stall is if they can't put any more power into the winding so that means we need to go to a bigger size motor okay so let's have a look at this we have all these little dimples on the end like i said they're made to make a balance the shaft up so it becomes balanced so you can see here there's two weights on here that's actually going to balance the shaft up because when they cast them they do become out of weight there's another one over here you can see it's got a, a little cast on it so that actually weights up the shaft like a tail shaft in a car you don't want it to be out of shape and then we just turn it and it turns around that little air gap too became creates a loss as well so the losses we have in a motor compared to a transformer transformer because there's a physical connection the only loss we get is heat right 
and copper losses. Copper losses is basically when we have the resistance of the winding and putting power through it, IR squared losses. Here, we have the air gap. We have the bearings, which create friction. We also got to power the fan as well. So there's more losses in a motor than a transformer. A transformer basically runs about 97%, only 2 or 3% losses. A motor will run it a little bit more because we have more mechanical movement and things going wrong with it. Also, heat off the winding, all right? People talk about eddy currents, so the eddy currents is basically... Now, if you notice inside here too, these are all made of laminated plates as well. If I rub the screwdriver across here, you can actually feel them. They're all little laminated plates. So when they punch them out, the center is made the same. So we get eddy current loss. So that basically means that the eddy currents will stay within that plate. They won't transfer between plate between each um, plate, um, metal disc. If we had it all as one lump of steel, the heat would just keep building up and building up and building up. But because we've got individual plates, the losses stay between each plate. All right, so what I'm actually going to do is cut this motor away. So we'll kind of come back to that in a minute. I'm not going to cut it this side because the nameplate is on this side. It tells me all the information about the motor. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to do a cutaway. I'm going to cut away this section of the motor across here so that we can see the inside of it. Then what I'll do is we'll do a cutaway of the same on the shaft here. We'll cut a section away here. So if you look at my texture, we will do a cutaway between the supports from here to here. And when I put that on, the cutaway will go between here and here, and we'll do the end on the fan, all right? So we'll do that in the next half an hour. I'll come back and we'll show you what the result is. Okay, so I've cut the motor apart. It's taken me an hour or so. Bit of hard work, put it all back together and all that. You have to kind of mark it out. So I'll get you to come over here. We'll have a look what I've done. So what I've done is cut the copper winding. So you can see that there's a copper winding that sits on each one. That sits all the way around through the three circle. If you have a look in here, you'll see like a teardrop, those little alloy things there. They're what they call the poles. So they're not actually round, they're actually done like a teardrop. You can see going towards the centre, so we had to cut them out. All right. We've got our ball on our ball bearing. This is our ball bearing, cutting it, cutting it around. So our ball bearings sit around there on a race and go around the circle here. A couple of windings come out and go into one big field here. So each winding comes out, goes into a group, and that runs around. So if you have a look down this end, this is what that looks like, that cut away. So I've actually cut away, notice the little bits of insulation in here too. The insulation is so that it doesn't vibrate and cut onto the steel. Because these are all discs here. These are all little plates I was talking about. Remember all the little individual plates? They're all held together with clips. And then they put in a plastic insert in here, which you can see down inside, so that it actually stops it rubbing onto the steel. This is varnished steel here, varnished um, copper. All right, so that gets wound in. This is all pulled in through a machine. It's not done by hand because it'd be too tight then sewn around, okay? So this is our stator part, like I talked about. That's our ball, that's our bearing there that we saw at the other end. <clears throat> that part there sits there, all right? Then we have our fan, our end cover, cut off. Now if we come back to the other end, we can now see that we have our weights that sit inside here. There's a one mil gap that sits on the inside there. That's called the air gap. And then we have these teardrops in here. So Power gets induced into these windings on the primary and gets induced to the secondary, which then creates a moving effect. So if we have a look up here, this is all aluminium. I've cut away from here, so all this housing around here was aluminium. We then have our terminal box, um, earth point, so that, that, that in there is to make sure it gets earth to frame. Okay, it can't be loose. It can't go into any of these fixing screws either. An earth point has to be a separate one mechanically so it doesn't come or every time you undo the cover it becomes loose it has to be somewhere where it has to go tight we have our six windings coming out so each one so if we have a look at the top here we've got two whites so the white the white here will go across to this white here so that winding is coming across to this one the red goes from here to here and the black goes from here to here the windings actually don't go across they go across so we've got one this way two this way and that one there okay so i'm going to try to edit all this together and make one little video for you to watch but that's the basics of cutting out a motor and making it so that you can actually see what's inside of it um i can't turn it because obviously the bearing has collapsed on this side I had to cut the shaft that took a little bit of work in there because that was like an alloy ring but we cut it apart i pulled some of the laminations off so that you can actually have, have another look back in there you can actually see those teardrops and see how they interact so, like I said, a motor basically can create a, a rotating magnetic field, but 
it only has a moving part which is a shaft all right we can't measure in volts and output on it because like a transformer because we get mechanical power out of it all right thank you